Alright, welcome everyone. This is Shadow Drake. Alright, so this example program is going to be a grow light timer. And it's going to be based on the sun. And now it may be setting, but that's not what's going to matter too much. So it'll be this chip right here. We're going to tie our daylight sensor and our grow light to it. Since I only have one, it's going to be added to a pin. But to be honest, when you build a greenhouse, you're most likely going to be using batch instructions. So let me get to it. Uh, before I go too far, I want to go on ahead and alias my daylight sensor and alias my grow light. I'm going to go on ahead and make my main, my end, my yield, my J main. I'm just going to be different this time because I'm used to doing it this way. <laughs> now, one thing I am going to do is I'm going to go on ahead and alias my solar angle parameter. And there's a reason why I'm going to do this. This will be R15. So solar angle from a daylight sensor is surprisingly accurate. Uh, the way the daylight sensor is, is it, even though the sun is not up in the sky, it perfectly tracks the sun. I know it's some space magic voodoo on it, but it does perfectly track the sun. And so you can be you can use that parameter to make uh, a timer or also to gauge what daytime and nighttime is. Uh, let's see. So we're going to go ahead and load to solar angle. Angle from day sensor solar angle. And what? since I need to see this value and because I forgot to build consoles, I'm just going to do sdb setting solar angle. So I'm going to go ahead and export that to the grow light and turn it on. As you can see, it's slowly climbing up. And I, I just realized that I never actually showed exactly how it's positioned outside. So let's take a small field trip outside. So as you can see, my daylight sensor is pointed straight up. And when I hover over it, you can see special data. So like, for example, the solar angle is increasing. My solar irradiance, because there's no sun, is zero. And it's telling me what the horizontal and the vertical is. And so the information I am sharing with you is information that I have found from watching this, that particular parameter. I'm going to go ahead and cancel that. And so one thing that I can say from a daylight sensor, I'm not sure exactly what that says, solar angle. It just says the solar angle of the device. Yeah, not very descriptive. But with a daylight sensor pointed straight up, when the solar angle crosses 90, you're either at sunrise or sunset. And so we can use that information to create a sort of a time. So for example, if we want this grow light to be on when the sun is down, we need to know that the time that we need is 90. So let's go on ahead and define that constant. Uh, let's see. On time, we'll just call you that. And we'll just put 90. And so this is kind of where we get to our set. This is probably going to be easy to use a set, uh, a set register instruction. So let's say SGT R0 for solar angle on time. Down here, we're going to do S grow light on based on R0. And so what that's going to do is R grow light is going to turn on if our solar angle is above 90. And like I said, above 90 is nighttime. So let me just do that. Greater than, greater than 90 is nighttime. Less than 90 is daytime. So we're going to go ahead and export that. As you can see, my grow light is turned on. I can try to turn it off but it's going to keep it on. Now, 
why is this important that I define that? Well, when we go to plants, like let's say tomato, when you go to a plant and check its parameters, you will have a parameter that you need to keep an eye on. And let me find it. So guys, it's on here somewhere. Oh, okay, here we go. Light per day and darkness per day. Doesn't really say anything on them. But what it is, is a plant needs at least eight minutes of daytime to survive and five minutes of dark time to survive. Uh, for the tomato, at least. But now this is based on a sun intensity of 100%. And the only planets that will have that are Vulcan, Venus, and the Moon. But the problem with Vulcan is that it's variable. It's not going to be a perfect 10 minutes of daytime, 10 minutes of nighttime. It's going to change. And based on the seasons of other planets, that may also change. But if you want to use the sunlight in, condition, in conjunction with your grow lights, you need to find a good way to tie them together. And this is why I'm sharing the solar angle to you. Because this solar angle is going to increase. It'll increase to some point, and then it'll decrease. So, the sun is probably somewhere down down there in the ground, below ground in, in the sky. And it's going to keep going around. Once it crosses this middle point, then it's going to start decreasing before it starts coming up to rising. And right when it's on the horizon, that'll be about 90 degrees. And then it'll be in the sky. So what you can do is tie this grow light to the sun. So what if, for example, I wanted to tie it to the sun? Well, I need to make sure that this is actually less than whatever my on time is. This is the solar angle to turn on. So what if I wanted to make sure that I that my grow light was on up until the sun got to 140 degrees. Well, this is what this is for. I go on ahead and hit the define, change this value, and export it. And see, it should turn off soon. Just like that. And so now, you're, now you can be confident that your grow light is only going to turn on for part of the night. And so whenever this value crosses of 140 again, it'll turn on. And so this is a crude grow light timer. But it's going to be a lot better than using a sleep function. Uh, there's nothing wrong with the sleep function. You could do the math and do 8 times 60. I believe that's 480. Let me confirm that math. Don't want to embarrass myself. Yep, I was right. You, you could do a sleep for 480. And then do a sleep for 300. And you could satisfy the tomato then. But like I said, that the sleep function can sometimes go out of whack if for some reason the game has a hard time with atmospheric calculations and the timers get way off. Or sometimes low... Freshly loading into a game could mess that up. Tying it to the solar angle, however, is a little bit less likely to go bad. Because it'll just check the solar angle state and immediately trigger the grow lights based on the state. Now, I haven't watched the moon to see exactly how far the solar angle will go. But this is at least one example code for making a grow light and tie it to the sun. And I will say that different, pla pan bleh, different planets will have the solar angle vary how, at the highest value it can reach or the lowest value it can reach. But the one constant that I have seen is that at 90 degrees, for a daylight sensor placed straight up, 90 degrees will be your sun up or sun down. And so, with these two examples done, Hopefully this kind of gives you a sense how you can begin coding. And when we next return, I'm going to go over the stack instruction. All right, hope to see you then.